Okay. I love to look at what people are saying because it always gives me great ideas for videos because it's uh, kind of like the whisper campaign. One person says something, another person hears it, and then repeats it. And of course, it's completely untrue. Um, of course, most people don't know how cameras work, and that's perfectly fine. People enjoy photography, and they do what they want, and as long as the results are fine, that's fine. However, it becomes a problem when someone starts making uh, suppositions and erroneous conclusions about cameras. And this applies to either Nikon, Canon, or Fujifilm, or Sony. Well, Sony's not a camera company. It's a consumer electronics company, so I guess that's not a really good analogy. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, a little bit of salty humor there. Um, anyway, this is about uh, autofocus speed or how fast a camera is. Let's state something succinctly that applies to all camera manufacturers, and most people don't know this. The fastest autofocusing camera, I'm going to try to make this simple and short as best I can. The fastest autofocusing camera in the world, no matter who makes it, is only as fast as the capability of the lens that's on it. This means like a Nikon D5, for example, or the Fujifilm X-T3 cannot have a fast autofocus if the lens itself has an autofocus drive mechanism or platform which is inherently slow. This is applicable to Nikon and Fujifilm. Let's just use those as an, as an example. Um, and I've heard this a lot from a lot of people last night in the live stream. Someone said, well, I was testing out that new X-T3 camera, and I was not super impressed. I was impressed with the camera, but not impressed with its autofocus capabilities. And I said, oh, is that so? Um, I said, what lens were you using? And, of course, there is the, that's where the key lies in uh, this little tale. And so I was using the 56mm f1.2 portrait lens. Bingo! There's your problem right there. You see, number one, portrait lenses don't have to be fast. Number two, that lens is a bit of an older lens. Number three, the lens design actually dictates the type of autofocus mech that's in it. Like a pancake lens, for example, you can't stick um, like a micro motor or a silent wave motor or a rail autofocus on a pancake lens, like the 27mm lens, for example. The size of that lens dictates the type of autofocus mech that's in there. Same too with uh, really fast, fat lenses like the 56.12. It means while that lens is large enough, the problem is, is that the glass inside that is huge. It's taken up most all of the space. That lens has a stepper motor in it, which is slow. Here's a key in thing. You don't need to know the differences, but we're talking about uh, seven. Technically, there's eight different types of autofocus mechanisms that exist inside the lens itself. Now, this does, number one doesn't apply to Fujifilm. Screw drive lenses, in the case of Nikon. Um, micro motor lenses. Silent wave motors. Stepper motors. Linear motors. Ceramic ball rail motors. And then there's another hybrid autofocusing system. Now this, for example, and I have every X-Series lens. The X-T3 is blasting fast. And this is the fastest lens. That's my conclusion. It's just a hair faster than the 90. Um, like the 50 to 140 uses uh, three uh, linear rails. But also, too, it also depends on the weight and inertia of the driven elements. The driven elements means that obviously not everything in the lens is moving. Only certain lens elements are moving. And on a smaller lens like this, where the driven elements are relatively small compared to, say, for example, the 50 to 140 or the 100 to 400 millimeter lens, uh, moving them back and forth very quickly is not an issue if, for example, they both had the same autofocusing mechanism. So we actually have issues of inertia depending on the lens size and weight because it obviously takes more energy and more time to stop a larger element or elements, and it's usually elements, and actually move it in the other direction. But also, too, like the 80 millimeter, for example, uses rail and ceramic ball um, for autofocusing, which is really quite ingenious, seeing the diagrams on the autofocus mech. And it is Fujifilm's fastest lens. But to judge a camera, whether that be a Nikon or a Fujifilm, you actually have to stick a really fast lens on there. And then you could accurately say, well, this lens is such and such as far as its autofocusing capabilities. But of course, you need to set the parameters correctly.
the zone and the area and the type of autofocus, but also too how it focuses because there's a huge difference between autofocus acquisition and autofocus tracking. The two, like, well, that has to do with autofocus speed. Yes, but they're within the circle of autofocus speed, but autofocus acquisition is one thing and autofocus tracking is another. For example, the medium format GFX cameras um, have, uh, well, four of the seven lenses, and I have all seven of those also, have pretty damn fast autofocusing. The issue, of course, is in continuous tracking. Unlike the 250 millimeter, for example, I mean, I've used that for action photography, and it will acquire really fast. The issue is, is tracking. And then, of course, you have to have other skills like setting a focus tra uh, trap and setting your uh, aperture such, a, such that that action falls within the depth of field by stopping down, but you may not want to. But then, of course, you're able to determine the autofocus capabilities of that camera system. And the key word here is system, because everybody that has the X-T3 that has used it and is trained on it correctly, in other words, read the manual. You remember you're supposed to read the manual on your camera? Keyword here is system. They know the X-T3 is just blasting fast. It damn well is. It's even faster than the Nikon D500. If both are using equivalent very fast lenses, but when I say autofocus system, I'm talking about camera and lens. You stick, for example, in the Nikon D5, which is a camera that I despise, but it has dual processing engines for autofocus tracking and acquisition. But if you stick a slow-ass screwdrive lens on the Nikon D5, the autofocus tracking sucks. So it's a really key point when you're going to be, say, like this guy, and he just didn't know. It's no big deal. It's okay not to know, but it's wrong to make conclusions based upon the incorrect information of knowing how a camera actually works, okay? Autofocusing is not merely a camera, you know, because there are eight different types of autofocusing mechanisms. And it goes from really slow like a screwdriver to blasting fast like a silent wave motor or a linear rail system as is found within the 80 and the 90 millimeter and the 50 to 140. Um, that's incredibly important. And also, too, you need to be able to differentiate between track, acquisition, and tracking. Of course, all of those are within the circle of autofocusing, but um, all autofocusing, whether it be single or continuous autofocusing, is a system. S-Y-S-T-E-M, and that doesn't make any difference whether it's a Fujifilm, a Nikon, or a Canon. You have to say, okay, what sort of lens do I have on this, and what sort of autofocus mech is within this lens? You know, you could have the fastest Lamborghini in the world. If you stick molasses wheels on it, it ain't going to go too fast, right? This Lamborghini sucks. You know, it doesn't corner well. So your wheels are made out of molasses. Yeah, what's your point? This car's slow. My point is, is that, you know, kind of like transmission. What if you have the best engine in the world on that Lamborghini, but you had some, like, archaic Stone Age Chrysler transmission? You're somehow able to mate that piece of crap up to the Lambo engine. Like, eh, this car sucks. It's like, well, it's not the car, it's the transmission, which is part of the car. But in this case, the lens in, the, in our analogy here of the Lamborghini with the crap Ford a transmission, the lens would be the transmission. You see, this is a camera system, including camera and lens. So next time you evaluate a camera, I use that camera, I wasn't that, what, what, lens, what lens did you have on it? I had it on it. Well, that's your problem. Like, <laughs> if somebody didn't know something, and I think one person did this, they put that pancake lens. Now, it actually produces wonderful images, really tiny, compact, I have it. It's a wonderful little lens, but it is slow as piss, and it is also very noisy. It has a little stepper motor in there. I mean, there's only one type of motor you can stick in that damn lens for autofocus, and it's noisy and slow. If you were to evaluate the X-T3 with that lens on there, you'd be like, this camera sucks. What's wrong with it? Well, yeah, I just had a kind of photo fuck. It's just can't get. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think I made my point here. I think I made my point very clear. Do I need to enunciate it any further? So, correct evaluation requires you to understand that if you're going to evaluate something, stick a fast lens on it, then you could evaluate just the camera. Like, well, I got a really fast lens on this, now I could just evaluate the camera's performance. Because <sighs> when someone makes a conclusion about a camera, 
that's uh, connected to a slow ass lens, and what they're doing is making an invalid specious conclusion. This camera sucks. It's like, no, the lens you got on it, slow, slow. Did I make myself perfectly clear? <gasps> Wonderful, Excellencia. This is my rotating thumbs up fake smile. Hey. <laughs> You know, sometimes I'm a bit of an asshole, but really I mean well. The people that have met me are like, you know, you're not like your videos when I meet you in person. You know, you're really a nice guy in person. You, you come across as a bit of a, a douche in your videos. I was like, well, thank you. <laughs> I've had a couple of people say that. But uh, it's okay not to know stuff, you know? I don't know how to do car repair. There's 10 million billion things I don't know how to do, so... These videos are meant to be educational and helpful. I hope this was slightly helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and peace out, Girl Scout. Hasta luego, do svidania, and as the Russians say, uvidimsya. Se priyadki ili nyat, uvidimsya na zavtra. Tochno skaza. Maladiats. I sound like Borat now. But that was Kazakhstan. Yeah, no, 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 that was Russian. The Russian. Uvidimsya, tovarish. No one says tovarish anymore in Russia. Yeah, I know that. I know that. Some Russian is going to correct me. Nobody says tovarish in Russia anymore. You gloopy Americanets. <laughs> I know some Russian's going to say, I know that. All right, thank you. Bye.